Let's learn about the different chart types. So I'm going to leave this chart here for now and let me go back to the report sheet. And now here, let's say we want to show, for example, the sales by customers. So I'm going to choose this and actually I will choose this and say insert. And then I'm going to choose column. And what you see here is that in both of these charts, the names are pretty long. And here we have only five and here we have eight. So for example, if I click on this chart and then I can resize them by just clicking here and then dragging. And now I can see all the five books clearly. But let me try it again with the sales. And let me just bring it here. And now let's say I try to resize this one. And if to, even after making it large, you see the point here that this is not very convenient and sometimes you would don't want it to be this way. And in such cases, my recommendation would be to change this chart to a different type. So as we have seen before, you can change the chart type from here. You can also right click and then change the chart type. And you get all these options. And I'm going to choose the bar type of charts. And when I choose bar, I see all these options available. I'm going to just choose the, the, the basic one and I'm going to click OK. And now this is very, very clearly laid out. I can read all the names clearly and it's also more convenient to read it this way. Uh, and so my recommendation is use the bar type of charts if you have values on your horizontal axis or the category axis which is actually which are longer and you want them to be displayed clearly then this is one thing I would recommend. Now let's look at the other data set that we have. Let's look at the other set of data we have. Here we have the order location and sales and I'm going to choose this and I'm going to click insert and let's do a pie chart and this is a very common chart that you see in many places. Uh, again, there are good ways of using it, bad ways of using it. So my recommendation is use this chart to show what items are contributing to the overall pie. In this case, for overall sales, how is the store and the website, how are they contributing to the overall sales? So in such cases where you have um, in such cases, I believe that the pie charts can communicate clearly the story. And here, you can see here it's almost 50-50% and that's kind of the story. Both the store and the website are equally important to the sales for the company. And also with the pie chart, you have a, a couple more interesting options available. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to add the data labels. So as I added the data labels, the actual number of sales actually is displayed on the chart and I'm going to right click on that label and then say format data labels and this is very unique to the pie chart because you can not only show for example series or category name you can display it right next to it website and store but also more interestingly I can let Excel calculate the percentage and then show it on screen. So this is very convenient because I'm going to click OK. And now as a reader, you can see both the number and also the percentage, whether it's 48 or 47. And this, we didn't even have the percentage in the input data. If you remember, the input data is just the sales information. Excel can automatically calculate the percentage. So this is something which um, you can leverage if your need is like that. And so for the next chart, let's say we want to show the trend of sales month by month. So we're going to use this and this column here. And let's say we want to show the trend over time. So generally for trends, I would recommend the line chart and I'm going to just use the, you know, basic 2D line here. And this is, I'm going to move this chart to the bottom here. 
below the next chart. And you can see here that we can easily control the position of these charts. And in, in this sales chart, you see the months are displayed here as categories because we actually label them uh, in that order here. And we have sales displayed as a line. And you can see here that the September was the lowest point in terms of sales. And then June was the highest point in terms of sales. And you can see the value there. And we can also add data labels so you can control, you know, just like the other charts, you can do more formatting option as well. I'm going to do undo because that's too many data points on screen. It's not going to be very easy for the reader to read. So now let's say I want to add another series to this chart. I can right click, select data, and now I can, in addition to the sales, I want to add another series and I'm going to choose add. And now I can re a name, give a name to my series, which is going to be the purchase cost. And I can select the purchase cost values and I'm going to hit enter and then OK. Now I'm going to select the access label range and I want it to be also January through December and I'm going to click OK. And now we have a new series added to the same chart. And this is again showing the sales and the purchase cost. And I'm going to move this legend to, let's say, the top. Okay, so there you go. So sales and purchase cost over time, month by month, you can see the pattern and you can see where the, the high points and the low points are in this year. Now for the next one, I'm gonna just click and copy this chart and then paste it right next to here. And now we have the exact same data, exams, exact same chart, but now instead of the purchase cost, let's say I want to show the profit. So I can click on the purchase cost series and I'm going to click edit and I'm going to change the series name to point to profit and I'm going to have the series values to be of the profit values and now I'm going to click OK. Now let's go and look at the chart and you can see here that the sales is shown here and the profit is shown here and that's because the values of profits are much smaller in magnitude compared to the sales and that's why you have these lines this way. And sometimes when you have such different scales in the same chart, it's going to be not easy to understand the pattern here for the profit versus the sales. In such cases, what you can do is to choose, let's say on this line, which is our series for profit, and then say, format the data series. And here you have options. You have lots of formatting options here, but interestingly, you also can say, no, put this series on a secondary vertical axis. So let me close, I mean, before closing, you can see how it looks. This is our axis for sales. And then we have created this profit using a secondary vertical axis. So let me close it. And now you see that the sales and the profit are showing a very similar pattern. And this was not very clearly visible when we had profit and sales on the same axis. So this is the power of using the secondary axis to show the relationship between these two trends. For us to clearly illustrate to the user what these are, you would like to add the axis titles here. And when you go to the axis titles, you see more options than we have seen before. And that's because we have now two vertical axis, so you can control the primary vertical axis title. I'm gonna choose rotate it and click inside and say this is sales and click anywhere and then now, sorry, click on the chart and now go back again and say axis titles, secondary vertical axis and show here, it is gonna be called as profit and you can make this chart a little wider easily and now you can see that this is january through december this is our sales scale and then this is our profit and the sales series is in blue and the profit series is in red and so this can illustrate to the user clearly the patterns of both these over time so now in summary we have seen variety of charts here 
And again, let me go back to insert chart. So you have a lots of charts types here. And when you click on them, you'll see more. And some of them are just formatting options, really, basically. But you see these different types and you can use any of them to communicate the message. But the general suggestion and guideline from me would be when you're analyzing data and you want to communicate a message, use your charts effectively, format them clearly and cleanly, and also choose the right chart type to get the message across. Choosing the right chart type can go a long way in getting your message across to the user very, very clearly and effectively. So play with the different chart types. We have covered the most commonly used, and you can definitely try out the other ones and uh, choose the best one that fits the specific need.